Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with another awesome video on history. Uh, today we're doing a what country had the most effective fighter planes in World War II. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, anytime, like, I guess when it comes to, like, war and stuff like that, like, I guess recent, you know, it's like, okay, United States has the better equipment today, you know. But, like, back in World War II, I think uh, everything was kind of, like, pretty pretty even, I would think. So, this would be, I'm, I'm very curious to see who actually does. Uh, you know, I'm sure there might not just be one better one. I'm sure, like, each plane, you know, probably has different aspects that are better than another. But, like, I guess we'll find out which one you'd rather go up and fight somebody with. Uh but anyways, guys, hit that like and subscribe button below. And this is a this is a new channel. Uh, I came the front. It wasn't suggested. I just came across on like suggested and anything. Any kind of these like little history channels, like you know, any of these YouTube channels on history, kind of like these, definitely check out. Uh, I get a lot of people want me to actually go watch like like almost like history channel kind of documentaries, like stuff like that. It's gonna get flagged and copyrighted, so I don't even bother with that. But you know. These channels like this, you know, are pretty cool, and uh, you know, they're 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 pretty usually pretty nice about you know letting you watch the uh, you know their content kind of thing and showing it. But anyway, guys, hit the like and subscribe button, and yeah, just get to it. Three, two, one, bam. The Second World War, taking Actually, out other aircraft and striving for air superiority, while also undertaking specific operations such as all weather and night fighting, intercepting, ground attack, light bombing, escorting, pathfinding, and reconnaissance. Many fighters were manufactured in Japan, Germany, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, America, France, and Italy, though Czechoslovakia, the Netherlands, Australia, Finland, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Yugoslavia made fighters too. And many pilots operated fighters manufactured in countries other than their own. While we have made a two-part video outlining some of the flying aces of World War II, we have yet to outline the aircraft in which many of them flew. I definitely... This uh, I, I uh, this concept kind of interests me. It's like it's a breath of fresh air so far. This like kind of video it is you know I don't know. So far, I mean, I, I guess only forty seconds in, I might change my mind, but I don't know. I I kind of like this layout. So in this video, we're going to list our top ten fighters from five fighting nations. While every aircraft undeniably had its strengths, and while it often came down to the effectiveness of the pilots and their command, hold out to the end of the video, because we are going to be revealing what we believe was the all-round best fighter of the Second World War out of the top 10 we list here. Undeniably, Japan's most famous aircraft, the Mitsubishi A6M Zero, was an agile, long-range fighter used right up until the end of the war, towards which it was employed in kamikaze missions. When the Zero was first introduced, it was considered the world's best carrier-based fighter, and it absolutely harried Allied. I've heard like the name Zero. Like, sorry, I don't, I don't know nothing when it comes to like planes and the names of them and stuff, like. I know nothing, so I'm sorry, but but uh, yeah, I've seen movies. They call them zeros. Like I, I didn't realize the actual name of it was zero for some reason. I think it was zero, you know, because the Japan uh, the flag, their logo, you know, it's a circle, you know, so like zero, like circle. And I thought I kind of thought that's why it was called uh, zeros because you know, I guess you know maybe people look up, oh, it's a zero, it's coming in. I don't know, uh, but okay, it, the name of the plane is actually called the zero okay so i learned something new already craft which came nowhere near matching its maneuverability speed climb and range during those early years the zero maintained a formidable kill ratio of 12 to 1 though as the war dragged on the allies manufactured superior fighters and the zero despite the deployment of some newer models fell behind with that said, almost 11,000 Zeros were manufactured during the war, and it remained... I'm sorry, I'm already pausing a lot. But uh, it's kind of interesting because the war was last like four years, five years maybe. And uh, the fact that technology was in that short like few years, how, you know, you went from like the best, you know, fighter pilot to like, you know, probably, you know, then maybe to the worst one by the end of the war, it just shows how fast technology grew in that short period of time. Pretty cool. 
That said, almost 11,000 Zeros were manufactured during the war, and it remained Japan's principal turn and burn dogfighter. The Messerschmitt BF 109 was a slick aircraft with a powerful engine, and it was one of the most integral fighters in the Luftwaffe, bearing Germany's highest scoring ace, Erich Hartmann, and many other German aces to hundreds of aerial victories. The BF 109. For some reason, I thought they were going to say the Red Baron, but uh, that's, that's uh, what, World War I, right? many other German aces to hundreds of aerial victories. The BF-109 was initially conceived as an interceptor, but its variants allowed it to carry out a variety of operations, such as bomber escort, light bombing, ground attack and recon. As a frontline fighter in the early Blitzkrieg operations, the BF-109 dominated the sky, making good use of its ability to climb higher than other craft and it's- I was saying, I was Red Bear in World War II. I don't know. Was that him? I don't know. Someone let me know in the comments because I feel like a complete idiot right now. And dominated the sky, making good use of its ability to climb higher than other craft and its excellent maneuverability. Though in the Battle of Britain, for instance, BF 109s were used as bomber escorts, and here the craft's limited range saw it falling short of the deadly Spitfire. While the BF-109 flew up to Germany's capitulation, it was slowly being replaced with the next fighter on our list. With that said, almost 34,000 BF-109s were manufactured between 1935 and 1945, for use both in the Spanish Civil War and World War II. Hmm. Anyways, it was commercial. The BF-109's replacement, the Fokker Wolf FW-190, could carry more and thus take on a variety of roles, fighting in the day and night, dropping bombs and ripping up ground targets, and it was superior in most aspects to the British Spitfire for a time, making absolute hell for the RAF until they upgraded their Spitfire and made hell back. Capable of bearing much more firepower than the BF-109 while remaining quick and agile, the FW-190 was a favourite among German pilots and many German aces racked up hundreds of kills in the cockpit of this deadly aerial predator. The FW-190 terrorised the skies from August 1941 to the end of the war and over 20,000 FW-190s were produced from 1939 to 1945. If the Axis had got their hands on this brilliant piece of aircraft earlier in the war, the outcome may have been very, very different. While the Soviet Union's swift, tough Yakov Lev Yak-3 fighter didn't enter World War II until June 1944, it certainly made an impact when it did, earning regard as the best dogfighter on the Eastern Front. The Yak-3 could outmaneuver the BF-109 and FW-190 and it has been considered superior even to the Spitfire and P-51 Mustang. The Yak-3 was easy to fly and very forgiving and it was exceptionally effective below 13,000 feet or 4 kilometers. Soon after the Yak-3 was brought into the war, on the 16th of June 1944, 18 Yak-3s engaged 24 German craft, taking only one loss for the German loss of 15 aircraft. Wow. This ended Luftwaffe operations in the area. Between March 1944 and August 1946 alone, some 4,850 Yak-3s were made. Britain's Supermarine Spitfire is no doubt one of the most famous aircraft of all time and this is largely due to the craft's involvement in the Battle of Britain, in which it turned the tide, using its superior range to make a mess of the Messerschmitt Bf 109. The craft was easy to fly and incredibly forgiving and, while heavily armed, it was a graceful vehicle indeed. The Spitfire reigned supreme at low altitudes and when a model was rendered inferior by a novel enemy craft, the Spitfire was upgraded, making it Britain's most produced fighter, with Supermarine producing more than 20,000 between 1938 and 1948. Britain's top scoring ace, Johnny Johnson, flew in a Spitfire, claiming 38 victories throughout the war. Now, I'm not American, but I can't deny that the US produced some of the best aircraft, and the last five fighters on this list are all US made. 
Chance Vought's F4U Corsair was crucial to the Allies in the Pacific Theatre, outclassing the Japanese Zero as a carrier fighter and getting good use as a ground attack fighter as well. Overall, it boasted an 11 to 1 kill ratio over the Japanese craft and some Japanese pilots claimed the Corsair was America's best all-round fighter. The first Corsair ace, Kenneth Ambrose Walsh, described battling zeros in F4Us. Whoever had altitude dictated the terms of the battle and there was nothing a zero pilot could do to change that. We had him. The Corsair F4U was so successful it was employed in the Korean War in which it battled Soviet Yak-9s and more than 12,500 were produced between 1942 and 1943. Republic Aviation's P-47 Thunderbolt was one of the war's toughest, heaviest fighters, weighing up to 8 tons when fully loaded and capable of bearing rockets or a single 2,500 pound or 1,100 kilo bomb, additional to 8 50 calibre machine guns. As the Thunderbolt had such a high weight capacity, it could be used for various types of operations, including standard air-to-air -air combat, escorting bombers, delivering bombs itself, and ground attacks, though it was known for its exceptional performance at high altitudes. The Thunderbolt was a bit of a tank, with Luftwaffe ace Heinz Bauer stating it could absorb an astounding amount of lead, though another German ace, Kurt Bulligen, said it was too heavy for some maneuvers and claimed he could see it coming from behind and simply outmaneuver it. More than 15,600 Thunderbolts were produced between 1941 and 1945. I really like comments like that. I wonder if they're just kind of saying that because it's jealousy, you know, and, and don't want them to look good or whatnot, or do they really mean that? You know, it'd be kind of interesting to see or hear. Or to know, sorry. Five. North American Aviation's P-51 Mustang was another fighter which saw use in the Korean War after World War II, though this craft was first conceived upon the British RAF's request for a new fighter capable of being So this is really, this was made after World War II, so it, this is for planes in World War II, like why is it in there? mass produced. When its original engine was replaced with the Rolls-Royce Merlin, this fighter was capable of competing with the Luftwaffe aircraft, though the Mustang was also highly effective in escort operations and as a fighter bomber. It was a solid all-rounder, though its exceptional range and maximum effective altitude distinguished it most. The Mustang entered the war under the RAF early in 1942, and more than 15,000 were made. While most of the fighters we've listed were of fairly conventional designs, Lockheed's P-38 Lightning was anything but, though that did not at all take away from this aircraft's formidability. Its twin balloons and twin turbocharged engines allowed it to go further than many other fighters, making it particularly useful for flights over spans of water, and it was largely considered one of the most streamlined planes ever made. The Lightning was effective in most aerial combat roles, capable of dogfighting, raining hell on targets down below, escorting other aircraft over especially long distances, and undertaking long distance recon operations. It seems like so much bigger and bulkier, it seemed like the maneuverability of it, you know, wouldn't be that great, but apparently it goes in dogfights and stuff, like, it seems like a Zero would have, like, I don't know, you know, this, this, I guess the more typical kind of plane would just have a big advantage on that. As you know, it only if you're on the same level kind of thing. I'm sure if that thing was above you, obviously you'd have the advantage. But uh, yeah, definitely interesting. It definitely looks, yeah, looks like a, cause it looks like an awkward plane, but I guess not. Pretty impressive, especially long distances and undertaking long distance recon operations. The Lightning was highly successful in the Pacific Theater and China-Burma-India Theater, in which America's top scoring pilot Rich Bong claimed his acehood. Some Luftwaffe pilots nicknamed the Lightning Fork-Tailed Devil, while the Japanese deemed it two planes, one pilot. The Lightning flew for as long as America was in the war, and between those years, more than 10,000 were made. Before we reveal what we believe was the best fighter, we've got to pay our respects to the sexiest aircraft to grace the skies of the Second World War. We are of course referring to Vought's V-173, or the Flying Pancake. I think it looks like a UFO, like, maybe this, it was like planes like this that crash in like Area 51, man. 
The flying pancake. I love that. Oh my god. <laughs> that thing looks so weird. Vorts V173 or the flying pancake. As we all know, this craft was designed by E.T. while he was on ketamine, and it was pretty much the focal point of every supposed UFO photo between November 1942, when it was made, and March 1947, when it dumped in the marina trench to be forgotten by earthlings and extraterrestrials alike. Just pulling your leg, it was restored and propped in a museum as part of their freak show. A whopping one of this aircraft was produced and it flew exactly no combat missions during the war. Oh, come on, a whopping one. Uh, yeah, people were impressed, right? Good. So, pancake, like if you're on the ground trying to shoot up or you've got a plane coming up or coming down, that's a big target area, you know, to hit. So, yeah. Pancakes aside, which of our contenders was the all-round best? Sorry Supermarine, but Lockheed's P-38 Lightning takes the cake. It was an incredibly versatile long-range aircraft, albeit not as effective a dogfighter as some of the other planes on this list, but it was also extremely forgiving of its pilots, and it was the only American plane that was produced on a large scale from the beginning of America's involvement in the war to the end of the war. US test pilot Benjamin Scoville Kesley said, Okay, so it's the best all around. Okay, uh, I figure like, but it's not the best dog fight. I don't know. Okay, I figure because of the with the um the title saying most effective fighter. I guess it, it is a fighter plane. It's more effective broadly, but it's not actually good. But in dog fight, dog. When I think of like best plane, like I always think like the best one you'd want like a dog fight. And apparently, this is not the best one in a dog fight. But yeah. If you can consider everything else, it'd be the best, right? The lightning would fly like hell, fight like a wasp upstairs and land like a butterfly. And German flying ace Franz Stiegler went as far as to say one cardinal rule we never forgot was avoid fighting the P-38 head on. That was suicide. But what do you say? Do you disagree that the P-38 lightning was the all-round best fighter of World War II? Do you think any of the aircraft we discuss weren't deserving of a place on our top 10? I don't know. If so, which fighters would you include in your list? Please let us know down in the comments section below and also be ready for our counterpart video in which we'll reveal our top 10 bombers. Anyways, guys. Okay. Uh, so never mind. They didn't want to get into a dogfight with, so I guess it was the best, you know, dogfight or not. Uh, wow. Uh, definitely. I actually did, did that. When I actually didn't think that was going to win, but it did does look like the more like advanced aircraft, the more like modern, I guess. I don't know. It, it looks obviously it looks more impressive. So, you know, I guess looks are not deceiving in this case. Uh, but anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe. And just like they like I said, uh, what was your, your opinion on which one was the best? Uh, and why? Uh, cause like I know nothing about planes, so if you ask me who I think, I I don't know. Like even after hearing all that, I I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going by I was what this channel tells me. But anyways, like I said, like and subscribe. Catch you guys in future videos. You guys are awesome. Peace. I am out of here.